Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about the three models of acids and bases. We're going to learn about the Arrhenius model of acids and bases, the Brunstead-Lowry model of acids and bases, and the G.N. Lewis model of acids and bases. So let's first start talking about Cervante Arrhenius and his model of acids and bases. And so who was Svante Arrhenius? Svante Arrhenius was a Swedish born scientist that lived in the 1800s and 1900s and he ends up winning a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1903 for his work with acids and bases. And according to the Arrhenius model of acids and bases, any substance that produces hydrogen ions when dissolved in water is going to be an acid and any substance that produces Hydroxide ions when dissolved in water is going to be a base and though this model works sometimes it, ha it has its limitations and is not a perfect model. But essentially what Svante Arrhenius states is that any substance that produces H plus ions when dissolved in water is an acid and any substance that produces OH minus ions when dissolved in water is a base. And so if we take a look at a couple of examples over here we have HCl gas and when we put HCl gas in water it's going to dissociate because it's an ionic compound it's going to dissociate and break apart into hydrogen ions floating around in water and chloride ions that are floating around in this beaker of water right here and so according to Zavante Arrhenius HCl is going to be an acid because it produces H plus ions when it dissolves in water if we take a look right here, we have sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is also an ionic compound. And when we put this in water, it's going to dissolve and it's going to dissociate. It's going to break apart into the ions that make it up. So what we're going to end up having in this solution here is hydroxide ions floating around in this water right here. And we're going to end up having some sodium ions floating around in this water as well. However, according to Svante Arrhenius, NaOH is going to be a base because it produces hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. So according to Svante Arrhenius and his model of acids and bases, an acid is any substance that produces hydrogen ions when dissolved in water. And a base is going to be any substance that produces hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. Furthermore, Svante Arrhenius states that when acids and bases react according uh, with one another, according to this theory here, he states that they neutralize each other and they form water and salt. So anytime you take a Svante Arrhenius acid and mix it with a Svante Arrhenius base, you are going to end up with water and salt as the two products. They neutralize each other. So let's take a look at a neutralization reaction according to this, uh, this model of acids and bases right here. And so according to the Arrhenius model of acids and bases, whenever you take an acid and mix it with a base, what ends up happening is that salt and water are produced. So let's take a look right here. We have an acid according to uh, the Arrhenius model of acids and bases, and we have a base right here. And we can tell this because this here is an ionic compound, and when we put it in water, it's going to produce H plus ions, and this right here is an ionic compound, and we put this in water, it's going to produce OH minus ions. And so what ends up happening is this. According to Svante Arrhenius and his model of acids and bases, when you take an acid and mix it with the base, the hydrogen from the acid is gonna bond with the OH from the base, to produce your water over here. And then what ends up happening is the positive ion from the base is going to bond with the negative ion from your acid to produce your salt over here, in this case, sodium chloride. Okay, so understand that concept that whenever we have an Arrhenius acid mixing with an Arrhenius base, they neutralize each other and produce salt and water. And so let's take a look at this example right here. If we take a look, once again, we have an Arrhenius acid right here because this here is an ionic compound. And when you put it in water, it's going to dissociate and produce hydrogen ions. This right here, according to Arrhenius, is going to be a base because when you put this in water, it too is going to dissociate and produce hydroxide ions. So we have an acid right here and we have a base right here according to the Arrhenius model. And so what ends up happening is that the hydrogen from the acid is going to bond with the ROH from the base to produce our water over here. And then what ends up happening is the positive ion from the base is going to bond with the negative ion from our acid to produce our salt over here. And whenever we're writing the chemical formulas, 
the metal comes first or the positive ion ends up coming first or listed first when you're writing the chemical formula. So the salt that is formed here is going to be magnesium fluoride as well as water. So understand that concept that in the Arrhenius model of acids and bases, an acid reacts with the base to produce salt and water. Let's take a look now at the Brunstead-Lowry model of acids and bases. And so several years go by when two scientists who were working independent of one another, uh, Johannes Brunstead and Thomas Lowry, they come up with their own little model of acids and bases. And according to the Brunstead-Lowry model of acids and bases, acids are going to be H plus or proton donors and bases are going to be H plus or proton acceptors. And so if we take a look here, we have an atom of hydrogen. An atom of hydrogen has one proton inside of its nucleus. It has zero neutrons inside of its nucleus, and it has one little electron. And so when this little electron leaves the atom, we're going to end up with a hydrogen ion. A hydrogen ion has a negative charge. I'm sorry, a positive charge. This little negative electron has left the atom. And so what we're going to be in left with here is a positively charged ion or hydrogen ion. And if we take a look at a hydrogen ion, what it essentially is is just a proton it doesn't have an electron it has zero neutrons inside of its nucleus and it has one little proton inside of its nucleus so a hydrogen ion and a proton are essentially the same thing and according to the brunstead lowry model of acids and bases acids donate protons and bases accept protons and so if we take a look over here what we end up with are acid conjugate base pairs and base conjugate acid pairs let's take a look at this reaction of HCl and water. If we take HCl and mix it with water, what ends up happening here is that the HCl, the HCl here acts as an acid. It's going to donate an H plus to this water molecule right here. And when it does that, H3O plus is produced over here. And when this acid loses an H plus, Cl minus is produced over here. And so what we have are acid conjugate base pairs and base conjugate acid pairs. And if we take a look, the only difference between a Brunstead-Lowry acid and its conjugate base is that the conjugate base is missing an H plus if we compare it to its acid. The only difference between a Brunstead-Lowry base and its conjugate acid is that the conjugate acid has an extra H plus if we compare it to the Brunstead-Lowry base. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples using the Brunstead-Lowry model of acids and bases. And so it says, using the template of Brunstead-Lowry acids and bases below, fill in the missing information in the tables. So if we take a look here on the left, we have a Brunstead-Lowry acid. We want to figure out its conjugate base. So if we take a look here, the only difference between the acid and conjugate base here in the Brunstead-Lowry model is that the conjugate base has one less H plus compared to its acid. So if we remove an H plus from this, we're going to end up with Cl minus. If we're given the conjugate base and we want to figure out the acid, all we need to do is add an H plus to this and we'll get our answer, which is going to be H2SO4. Okay. If we take a look right here, we're given the acid HNO3. We want to figure out the conjugate base, so we just subtract an H plus and we're going to end up with NO3 minus. If we take a look on the right, if you take a look, the base is given here, and we want to figure out the conjugate acid. So the base is given here. We want to figure out the conjugate acid. And if you're taking a look at this example right here, the only difference between the conjugate acid and its base is that the conjugate acid has an extra H plus compared to its base. So if we add H plus to this, we're going to end up with NH4 plus as our conjugate acid. If we take a look here, the conjugate acid is given. If we subtract an H plus from this, we're going to end up with H2PO4 minus as our, our, uh, our Brunstead-Lowry base right here. If we take a look right here, we have HSO4 as the base, HSO4 minus as our base, and so if we want to figure out the conjugate acid here, we just simply add an H plus to this and we'll end up with H2SO4. All right, so that is how we can apply the Brunstead-Lowry model to figuring out acid conjugate base pairs and base conjugate acid pairs. Let's now take a look at a third model of acids and bases and turn to G.N. Lewis's model of acids and bases. 
And so, who was G.N. Lewis and what were one of his contributions to chemistry? Well, it says right here that G.N. Lewis was an American-born scientist that lived in the 18 and 1900s, and he basically states that an acid is an electron pair acceptor and a base is an electron pair donor. So let's apply this to the formation of acid rain. We have up in the sky or in the atmosphere sulfur trioxide molecules that are emitted from different industrial factories and it's a it's an industrial pollutant that is emitted up in the earth's atmosphere and so we have sulfur trioxide molecules that react with water molecules and produce acid rain so how does this work according to g n lewis what ends up happening is that this lone pair of electrons on the water molecule is going to be donated to a sulfur trioxide molecule and the result here is a chemical bond that is going to form over here between the sulfur and the oxygen that we see right here and we end up with sulfuric acid over here and so because of this what according to G. N. Lewis uh, what he says is that this water molecule is donating an electron pair and so this water molecule right here is going to be the Lewis base and because sulfur trioxide is accepting this electron pair this is going to be our Lewis acid all right, so understand that concept that with the Lewis model of acids and bases, bases are going to be electron pair donors and acids are going to be electron pair acceptors. And so let's take a look at another example of Lewis acids and bases. And so in this example, it says to determine which reactant is the Lewis acid and which reactant is the Lewis base from the reaction given below. So we have a chemical reaction that's taken place. It looks like we have uh, H plus reacting with water or H2O to produce uh, H3O plus or hydronium. And so if we take a look, we have two reactants right here. And so what we're asked to figure out is which one of these is the Lewis acid and which one of these is the Lewis base. So in other words, what we have to figure out is which of these two is donating an electron pair and which one is accepting an electron pair. And if we take a look right here at this chemical reaction, what ends up happening is that the lone pair of electrons that are on our water molecule here ends up being donated to our H plus right here. And when that ends up happening, what we see over here is our H3O plus or our hydronium ion. And so because our water right here is donating an electron pair, according to G. N. Lewis, this right here is going to be our base. And because the H plus is accepting an electron pair, this right here, our H plus, is going to be our acid. And so that's how uh, Lewis acids and bases work. Bases are electron pair donors. Acids are electron pair acceptors. And so if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.